When you buy a property, you want to make sure that you know where the property lines are. And how do you do that? We're going to talk about that up next. Hey, what's going on, friends? Dylan Onaka here with the Bible Island video blog. And today we're going to talk about staking and surveys. So this is what tells you where the property corners are and where the boundaries are. And they're very different. Sometimes people use these terms interchangeably and mix them up. And you really got to understand the difference of a staking and a survey because they are very different in terms of the implications of how accurate um, the information that you're getting is in terms of knowing where the property lines are. So this is all addressed in Section K of the Hawaii Purchase Contract. And in Section K, K1 is a staking. So if you check K1, you're basically saying, I want to know where the corners of the property are and a licensed surveyor will come in, identify where the property corners are, put a stake in the ground and a, and a neon colored flag so it's easy to identify if it's in the bushes and that'll tell you where the corners are. But a staking does not, give, does not do an actual survey and a survey which is K2, if you check K2 on the contract, that's a different uh, requirement and what you're asking for is a detailed map that lays out where exactly the structures on the property are and what the setbacks from the property boundaries are to make sure that you're not violating any uh, county codes in terms of setbacks. And then if there's any encroachments, if the neighbor's stone wall or something like that is encroaching upon your property or if your stone walls or your fences are encroaching on the neighbor's property, those things will be identified in a, stake, in a survey. So staking and surveys are very different. Stakings are pretty simple. They just identify the corners so you know exactly where the corners are. A lot of times a staking is used in vacant land because there is no structures. So if it's three vacant lots in a row and you're buying the one in the middle, there's no structures, there's no fences, or any, there isn't anything like that. A staking makes sense because you can just identify the corners and you're good to go. It's a lot less cost. A lot of times that's what a seller will go for in that case. But if you're in a, on a crowded neighborhood and there's a shed that was built in addition to the house later on and you want to make sure that it's not encroaching upon a neighbor's property or it's not in a setback, you're going to have to ask for a survey and ensure that you get that detailed map that's going to show you all of those things. So very important that you understand the difference because it can cause a lot of problems if you don't do a survey when you purchase a property and then when you try and sell it in the future, a subsequent buyer will want to see what the survey looks like and they'll request a survey and you agree to one. And if you have a bunch of violations, you can have some issues. So just some real quick uh, example. This is what a staking looks like. Staking the ground. This is a, this is a vacant lot in Middle Lee'i. And it's going to show you there's a, there's a piece of concrete right here with a pipe in it. It's going to show you where the corner pin is. So that's basically a staking that happens on all four corners. Survey is a lot more different. It's a detailed map that looks like this that shows you where the residence is, where the driveway is, any additions like a lanai, and then what the property lines are, public roadway over here, and then it has the setback uh, lines built into it so you can see where the roof lines are, if any of the house itself is inside of the setbacks. That's gonna cause issues, and if there are any encroachments, those are also going to cause issues for the title. The title is not going to um, insure over those things when you get title insurance. So you want to make sure you see where everything is at. And then if problems do arise, what do you do, right? And the contract provides for that. So there's timelines in Section K that if problems arise, issues are identified in the survey, you have timelines of for the seller to remedy them or the buyer to cancel if they don't remedy the situation in a timely fashion, or the buyer can cancel just not wanting to take on the property with the issues that were identified if they're not solvable, because sometimes they're not. But there are situations where even if there are violations, setback violations or encroachments, there are things that you can do to solve those issues. And you want to know what those are because you can still purchase a property if you do the right things legally to solve those issues. One is a variance. You can get a variance from the county that gives you um, basically it allows you to have a setback violation if you apply for it and it's benign and it doesn't you know cause any issues for another property it's a process that you have to you have to go through and apply for and can, can cost a little bit of money but you can get a variance from the county the other one that's very common are shared wall agreements so a lot of times rock walls are built they may be six inches over um, one property owner's uh, lot and not totally on 
the lot owner that built the wall. And in that case, that wall somewhat is mutually beneficial to both properties and both property owners can enter into a rock wall agreement where they just sign a document that a lawyer draws up that says they hold each other harmless and it basically makes that rock wall legal because both sides say that it's okay that it's there and it doesn't encroach on one property or the other. So you can get those things signed and get those issues solved and then that'll be reflected in the title report. You can move forward with purchasing the property. You can also take the property on uh, with, the, with the issues and that's something that you would definitely have to sign a waiver for holding the, both brokerage firms uh, harmless if you decide to ignore the violations and take the property on anyway. Uh, that's, a, that's a situation that definitely a buyer has an ability to do and I've seen happen in the past in certain situations. Maybe the buyer will fix it in the future or they just don't care that there's a small violation and that they're willing to take the property like that. So that's a, that is an option but you will be able to be required to sign a waiver stating that you understand the situation and that you're not going to come back and sue us later on if you decide that you don't like the situation in the future. If for some reason you don't do a staking or a survey, this happens a lot in small vacant land in Ocean View or down south where it's a lot of vacant land and you don't see the need to do a staking or a survey, that's possible. You don't have to do one in the purchase contract, but both buyer and seller will also have to sign a waiver stating that they understand that they've, they've been advised to do a staking or a survey and they decided not to and they hold the real estate company is harmless uh, because they decided not to and they're moving forward without doing a staking or a survey. So lots of different options there. Very important to understand the situation um, that you're going into. And a lot of times when we go and look at property, you know, we can kind of eyeball it and say, hey, I think there's an issue over here. This addition was built after the house and it may be a, in, a, in the setback. There may be a violation here. I really think you should get a survey. And so all stuff that you want to have somebody familiar that understands that situation, helping you out and going through that process with you. Staking and surveys are pro most of the time a seller cost, right? So the seller is providing this to show that their property doesn't have any issues. That can be negotiated. There are situations where the seller doesn't want to pay for a full survey because a survey is more expensive than a staking and they'll offer to pay for a staking and then the buyer will pay the additional cost to do a full survey. So. Everything's negotiable in a contract. This is one of the points that definitely comes up a lot because it can be a significant cost. It can be $1,000, $2,000. It all depends on the size of the property and the, and the specifics. So a survey company will give you a quote based on the size of the property, You know how overgrown it is, how much brush you're gonna have to cut to find the property lines and things like that. So lots going on with stakings and surveys. Um, again, if you have any questions or need any more information, happy to help with that. If you have an existing survey that you want us to take a look at and give you our opinion on, we can do that. But you can shoot us an email, give us a call, just ask in the comments below and we'll get back to you. But again, this is a quick overview of staking and surveys. Perfect timing because the screen went off. I'll see you guys next week. Aloha.